How's that not going? That's weird. No light. Oh, there it is. Yes, I see you now. <coughs> it is one of those things. Just getting myself, getting myself set up. And maybe, I don't know. I think that's probably about right. Oh, yep. I'm not too bad. That's too, that's all right. Let me know. Oh, turn that speaker off. Hang on. Right, speaker's off, so there's no echo. Don't need the echo. Oh, it's been an interesting week. I'm going to start very shortly, guys. Um, and I do have some notes, so I do have something to work from. Good news. Uh, and there are a few announcements that I will make probably at the end of this particular stream as well. So if you have time to stick around, I don't expect to run this stream for more than about half an hour or an hour. Uh, my intention is to present you with a whole lot of information. And then once I've presented you with a whole lot of information, um, allow you to ask questions. I'm going to try to stick to not answering questions as I go. Um, my intention is to try to get everything out, explain everything, and then you ask me the questions after. And I will keep the stream running up to about an hour. So right now in New Zealand it's about 1.40 p.m. in the afternoon, so I can run till 2.40 and then I need to sort of start doing other things. Anyway, let us go get on with this. We've had two and a half minutes of me rambling on and trying to set up my lights, pointing them. Are they pointing at me? I think that one is. Oh, well, either that or they're doing something. That's the main thing. So my intention was to actually do a whole bunch of Dungeon Master workshops. And this is probably just going to be one of many. Uh, in fact, quite a few, I suspect. So we will start. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler. And today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. And specifically, I want to talk about the Dungeon Master kit. What sort of equipment or gear do you need? Or what sort of gear or equipment do dungeon masters use? And as it happens, every dungeon master uses different things. So I thought what I would do is I would go over the absolute basics and then I would add a whole lot of additional stuff that you can use, you do not have to, uh, but that you can use and then explain why people use them and how they use them. So it's not really super complicated, this stuff. I would imagine there'll be a few things people haven't heard of before, uh, but some of it will be probably nothing new, particularly if you've dungeon mastered for a long time. I think this is more tailored for people who have just started out, really, or who are new. So <clears throat> I'm going to say one thing when it comes to dungeon mastering before we start talking about the kit very, very quickly, and that is one of the key things is surprising your players with unexpected events and encounters and something that they can't predict. Now I can't tell you how to do that. You literally have to learn how your players operate, how they think, and then work on their body language and what they're saying and what you think they're thinking and do the exact opposite or something that they weren't expecting. And that's something that I really can't give you a lot of information on. But it works really well and it uh, it makes life at the table very entertaining for you and the players. So just a little quick hint and tip. So one of the basics when it comes to getting your Dungeon Master kit together is you'll need the basic rules. Now you can get them free online. Wizards of the Coast provides a free PDF for the Player's Guide and the Dungeon Master's Guide. Now the Player's Guide has basically just the, the core rules. Uh, you can download that for free, costs you nothing. Additionally, you can get the Dungeon Master's um, information as well, and it really it's just a very small amount of information out of the Dungeon Master's Guide, not everything, it's like a couple of pages, and then just a whole lot of monster stat blocks, so that you can run monsters. That's really all it is. Now there's also the SRD, the Dungeons and Dragons 5e 
SRD is available to anybody for free. You can download it. And yes, I will provide a link below in the description later on so you can click it on and actually access it, print that out or put it into your laptop or your tablet or whatever you're using. So I know that would be helpful to you, so it will be in the description. Dice, usually at least one set of dice. I tend to carry a lot of extra D20s. So when you're dealing with more than one monster, I don't like rolling a D20 more than once. I really just want to grab a bunch of D20s and roll them all at once. But dice, you will need them. Mechanical pencils, now a pencil's fine, but I find mechanical pencils are probably cheaper nowadays have a little rubber at the end and you can replace the leads. So as long as they don't get lost, um, it's really helpful. And you can write really small with a mechanical pencil compared to a normal pencil, which you have to sharpen and there's sharp shavings everywhere, it's messy. So mechanical pencils are really handy. You also want something like some blank paper. Now I just use photocopy paper. A4 photocopy paper is fine. It's cheap, it's easy to access. I can move it around. I don't have to worry about tearing it out of a notebook. Or you can use just refill, refill paper, that's fine. A notepad, an exercise book, anything to keep notes in. Initiative cards. Now, you can just make them out of paper. When I say initiative cards, I literally I just mean something to keep track of initiative. Now, whether that's just one card or a whole lot of little long strips that you dangle over, say, something like a DM screen or you make little tents out of and place in front of you so people can see where they sit in the initiative order during your combat, that's fine. Do whatever it works for you, whatever is cheapest. There are plenty of different options. Okay, I would also say that something like a, a plastic folder or file folder um, for storing notes. You can just use a normal folder, that's fine. But I think those see-through clear flip file folder things that you can put, you know, have they in sort of the see-through transparent sheets that you can remove and put more in, they're really, really helpful. And it's it's really small. It's a lot smaller and more compact than your normal uh, re ring binder. A ring binder usually has a bit more thickness to it, whereas those those other little um, flip file things, the, the clear sheets, they're really thin, so it's easy to store. So I would recommend those, but you don't have to have them. As I said, try to keep your expenditure down, particularly when you're starting out. Now, an adventure, you need to have a printed adventure of some kind, whether that's printed out from a PDF or an adventure book or something you have created and written on paper, it doesn't matter, but you need some sort of adventure or at least adventure notes. It doesn't necessarily have to be a complete and concise adventure, but it has to be enough to be able to run something for a session. And then character sheets. Now, I would suggest that blank character sheets are a good idea. I would like to think that my players will bring their own character sheets, but some don't. So I would say blank character sheets, and um, that's really the gist of it. Uh, nowadays, with the invention of the smartphone, most people have a smartphone. And I would still say this is optional, but a smartphone that you can put apps on and record stuff on, and generally just use as a tool. I think the, the cell phone is one of the biggest tools that a dungeon master can have nowadays, and I highly recommend having one, but it is optional. You do not have to have it. Okay, so that is the basics. Let's get into the more involved stuff. Things that pretty much you don't have to have, but are nice to have if you want. These are like extra things. Now, I'm going to make a list of everything I've talked about in the description. Um, I'm not going to talk about in the description all the details around them, but I will make a list of everything that I have talked about in this video so you can sort of itemize and go through it. I will also, because I'm talking about a few things that cost money, I will also provide an Amazon affiliate link to items if you want to buy them off Amazon, or you could just go down to your game store and buy, buy uh, the item off them as I talk about it. And look, honestly, I don't make an awful lot of money off um, YouTube ad revenue, and the Amazon affiliate link is really helpful. You click it on, it doesn't charge it doesn't charge you anything more. You pay the same price, and I get a small commission from Amazon. And the nice thing about it is when you click it on, if you go somewhere where else and buy something else that's unrelated to Dungeons and Dragons or the link that I provided, 
I still get a small commission and it costs you no more. So if you ever wanted to support my channel, that would really be helpful. But let's get on to the things that you can get that are additional and they do cost a little bit of money. So something like the Pathfinder flip mat. Now there's lots of different types of battle mats you can get, but by far the best, cheapest, and most usable and friendly to anybody is the Pathfinder flip mat. This is the basic one. I've done a review on this particular mat before, and it is literally perfect for what you want. You can use a dry erase, wet erase, permanent marker. Seriously, you can put a permanent marker on it and it will still come off. You can't say the same for a lot of other battle maps. It just isn't the case. This is a really good product. Now you don't have to use a grid in battle maps, but if you do want to, that is probably the one I would suggest. Then a dry erase markers. Dry erase markers are a dime a dozen. You can pick them up from a game store, from a stationary place. You can buy them on Amazon. You can buy them look, anywhere. There's the, the dime a dozen, easy to get. And you just need a couple of colors, nothing else. That's it, that'll do. If you are working with, say, um, wet erase markers, wet erase marker will also work on the Pathfinder flip mat. So will permanent markers. So if you get confused and you wind up taking your Sharpie, it won't matter. You will be able to get it off. Uh, next is 3x5 index cards. Now these are the index cards that you used to be able to access in a library when you're going through their catalogues. And it's basically just a piece of card. You could make your own. You could just cut them up from a bit of card. It's not an issue. And really, what's the purpose? Keeping notes on it. But also, it's really handy if you want to put the monster stat block, write the key details on the, of the monster on there so that you don't have to flip from one page to another in your monster manual or your PDF of the Dungeon Master Guide that's free online with all the, the monster stats. So little cards are really helpful for actually having information really available, particularly if you have to deal with more than one monster. If there's more than one monster, it can be a bit tricky. Okay, next are tokens, pawns, and miniatures. Look, there are different ways of getting access to tokens. Tokens could be anything. They could be the old Dungeons & Dragons 4E tokens. They could be the Pathfinder um, Paizo pawns that you've, you can purchase. I have shown people how to make their own tokens and their own pawns. You can make your own little paper standees or cardboard standing miniatures, or you can buy the plastic miniatures, whether they're painted, unpainted, doesn't matter where you get them from, but there is another option in terms of play. And usually you'll use that with something like a, a flip mat or a battle map of some kind. It's really good for players who have a lot of trouble visualizing the position of monsters and their characters at the table. I know some players can do that very, very easily. Some dungeon masters are very good at it, but sometimes it's a bit harder for other people, and it's a good visual aid. You don't always have to use them. Sometimes you just put the battle map, app and battle map out, and you just leave it there, but don't actually use it. Okay, moving on. Pre-generated characters. Now, I find that most people will come to the table with an idea for their character that they have already built, and or they've got an app on their phone that they've already created a character. Sometimes people want to build it and create it just before the game and you, you don't want to be spending half an hour or an hour creating a character. So don't do that. Give them a pre-generated character sheet, get them to select one at the level that you're playing at, and then they can make another character later on to fit in. I think that pre-generated characters are an absolute must for beginner players. Uh, rather than trying to work out how to build characters, just give them a pre-generated character sheet. So, and it won't cost you very much. You know, it's, it's like the ink in your, uh, your printer and a bit of paper. So it's pretty cheap. Uh, next is, now, now when it comes to books, um, outside of the free stuff, when you're a dungeon master, what books do you buy first? This is the order of, of book buying that I would suggest. The Player's Handbook is the key Dungeons & Dragons, particularly for 5e, Dungeons & Dragons book. That's the core book. You need that. That's the one you really do need. It has most of the rules in it. Literally everything that you would need to run an encounter. All the nuances, all the core rules, and how the characters, the core 
classes work, how the races work, so you can look that up. So the player's handbook is the first book that you want to purchase. After that, I would say for a dungeon master, if you're going to purchase another book, it's the monster manual. I know what you're thinking, what about the dungeon master's guide? No, the dungeon master's guide is the last book you buy. Okay, you can run the game without the dungeon master's guide, but it's much harder to run a game without the player's handbook or the monster manual. Those are the books you really want. And I think you'll find that I'm right about this. Sometimes it's just too expensive to go out and buy all three books all at once and you need to buy them and stagger them over time. And a lot of stuff I've been given uh, by, you know, birthdays, Christmas, stuff like that. Christmas is coming up. So, yeah, just remember that's the order of the books that you want. Okay, so next, when it comes to items that I have seen uh, used at the table, one of the, the most useful tools as i said is the cell phone the smartphone you know it's got a screen it does so much but a lot of dungeon masters use a laptop or a tablet and sometimes those e-readers um i don't know if uh, people have seen them before but they're really good for keeping a pdf on now i know you can't get the cool core player's handbook monster manual or dungeon master's guide as a pdf legally okay I'm not suggesting that you break the law or break copyright or anything like this, but the simple matter is that you can access that information. I've seen people with all that information accessible through D&D Beyond, and they've used just their phone. It's so small. Laptop, it's light. I tell you, a laptop is a lot lighter than carrying three books, the Dungeon Master's Guide, the Monster Manual, and the Player's Handbook. Uh, a tablet, even lighter again. And you can turn it around and show your players pictures and images of scenes and characters or monsters as you're playing the game. I've done that myself. It's really, really helpful, but it's expensive. So unless you've got it, don't go running out there and buying one. Okay, you don't have to have it. Um, I talked very briefly about the uh, battle map. You can get a Chessex vinyl battle map. I've done a review on that particular product. I don't think that it is a good product for a new Dungeon Master. Um, there are benefits. It will last longer, if you know how to look after it, than a Pathfinder flip mat. Simply because it's made out of vinyl and it doesn't fold up, you have to roll it. Um, the flip mat, as you fold it and unfold it, over time it will start to perish and you'll start to get holes forming in the creases. So it is another option. And obviously, make sure if you're going to use the the Chessex Vinyl Battle Mat, use wet erase markers only. No dry erase, uh, no permanent markers. Absolutely not, you can only use wet erase markers. And I've done a video that explains which ones to use. You know, black, green, blue, those are all good colors, those are fine. Stay away from red and essentially stay away from anything else. Uh, Chessex actually sells a set of pens specifically made for that mat and you're probably safer to buy their pens than anybody else's and if you don't know if it's going to be a problem use the corner of your mat to test it okay next post-it pads little post-it pads lucky the, the sticky things that you can stick onto anything it's great for keeping notes you can stick it onto a dungeon master screen you can stick it onto the inside of your book as a marker you can, you can write notes on it and stick it inside a book or into your adventure and peel it away later on. You can take it off and give it to a player as a secret note. They're probably one of the most useful things I've come across. And um, I always tend to have at least a little pad of them. Um, yet again, you don't absolutely have to have them. Blue tack. You know, that little sticky tacky stuff. So a little bit of that balled up. Um, it allows you to stick miniatures on top of other miniatures. So if you want the players to decide to jump onto a monster, you can stick their character onto that monster and instead of spending forever trying to position it or like, I'll oh, give up and just leave it beside the miniature, you can actually stick it on top if you want to. You can also use it to stick things to your Dungeon Master screen. I would not advise using the, the tack on your books um, because the surface is just not shiny enough and you could wind up tearing or damaging the book or leaving marks because... The tack does sort of, it, it absorbs the oil from your fingers, and so that oil will go into the pages of your book as well. 
just like when you're eating your pizza, the pizza oil will go into your book as well. Okay, uh, story cubes. Rory's story cubes. I use them for actually generating characters. Uh, Sly Flourish or Mike Show has done a video on that particular topic and how useful they can be. They're very small, it's about nine dice with pictures on it. I've done videos on that as well. You should be able to find that and how to use them. Uh, Mike Show has done a video on that particular topic as well. Really, really helpful for generating ideas on the fly, uh, improvising. It's one of the most useful improvising tools you can use when you're starting out and you struggle at that, at that sort of thing. Uh, next, I would say plot twist cards. Now, I did a video, actually, I think I did two videos on plot twist cards. Plot twist cards are put out by Game Mastery. It's a Paizo or uh, Pathfinder uh, product. Now, it's got a mechanical aspect to it, but it's also got a descriptive section. And most of the card consists of suggestions and description and a little picture to demonstrate. And you can hand these out to your players to help change the game. Um, you can also, that will help teach you how to improvise. So if they have to, if they get cards they can play, um, don't give them too many, otherwise you'll turn it into Magic the Gathering rather than Dungeons and Dragons the role play game. But it's a good way of allowing your game to be improvised. It's a story reward, so maybe you give them this card and they can play it at some point. You don't have to accept their suggestion off the card. You can say no, that's just a bit too powerful. Um, as I said, I have explained how to use them. I know a lot of um, Dungeon Masters um, like the idea of them. Uh, they are something that you don't need to use, but they are cool. I really like them. I think they're quite, quite interesting. And there are other types of cards, like the Critical Fumble and the uh, Critical Hit decks. There's lots of different types of Critical Fumble and Critical Hit decks. I don't think that necessarily the Critical Fumble is a type of card that you want to have your players contending with, but I think the critical hit idea is really cool because um, one, it gives a boost to the players and also two, it makes it a bit more interesting. So lots of card options, uh, dungeon master screen. Now there are lots of different dungeon master screens available. Uh, there's the generic one for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. There's lots of uh, screens put out. Every storyline for the new version of Dungeons and Dragons has a dungeon master screen. Some are good, some are bad. Um, I think most of them are pretty average or not so good. Uh, there is a new one called the Dungeon Master Screen Reincarnated. I did a review on that. It's a very good product. And if you're going to buy a Dungeon Master Screen for Dungeons & Dragons 5e, that would be the one to buy. You can also make your own Dungeon Master Screen. And I have a video on creating your own custom Dungeon Master Screen. You can, cut it, you can cut it out from cardboard. You can use panels. You can use an existing Dungeon Master Screen tear out the inside panels and put your own stuff in. How's it going in? Um, I think I've got it right. Hopefully I have. So yes, Dungeon Master Screen. Now why would you have a Dungeon Master Screen? Dungeon Master Screen is not there necessarily to hide your dice rolls. Really the purpose is more it has useful information on the screen that you can refer to rather than picking up the player's handbook or you're looking through your laptop or your tablet or your phone all the key information is really available you just glance down check what you need and then look back up and keep going with the game that's really the key reason for having a dungeon master screen so that is uh, the gist of that section um, I would say you need a bag if you're going portable and you're not running your game from home either a suitcase I usually use a suitcase you probably can just make my suitcase out behind. It's a silver case. It's actually a tall case. I couldn't get a suitcase. It was going to be too expensive. So I bought myself a, uh, a tall case. It's just made out of aluminium. It's pretty light. Um, it's not very light once I stick everything in it, but it's light to begin with. And then yeah, just a duffel bag or some sort of carry bag just to put everything in. Uh, next would be paper clips. It sounds weird, but paper clips are really handy. You can... You can clip things onto your Dungeon Master screen. You can clip things onto your adventure notes. You can clip things onto your book. Uh, you can use them as markers. You can use them as condition markers. Um, so all there's lots of different conditions. So if you have different colored paper clips, as long as you know which color represents what, you can use the different colored 
paper clips to represent a condition and just place it down on a mat or against the character's um, tent stand if you've got one on the table or if you've got a, an overhanging tag, uh, initiative tag on your Dungeon Master screen, you can just slip that onto there. Lots of different ways of using it. You can use the, the bottle top um, circles. You know, there's, when you pull a, the bottle top off, a plastic bottle top off, there's a funny, a funny little round circle around that. Get a whole lot of different colored ones. You can use them. Pipe cleaner, cleaners, really different colored pipe cleaners. This is um, information that you can get from Mike's show and uh, the Sly Flourish website. I will put that in the description as well. He's a really good um, dungeon master. He's got lots of really good um, advice. Some of his advice is what I'm talking about, but some of it's not. Okay, so you can use them. Uh, you can also get all sorts of things can be used as condition trackers so that you know what's going on. Otherwise, you've got to write notes on your piece of paper or your, your board that you're writing on. Maybe you've got a whiteboard, a small whiteboard. Actually, a little whiteboard can be very, very handy if you don't like using up paper. But trust me, there's a forest out there designed specifically to make paper, and every time you buy less paper, their stocks plummet. <laughs> okay, So don't worry too much about the paper. Um, it's biodegradable, really. It's not an issue. Okay, <laughs> But if you don't like paper and you want something that's reusable, very small whiteboard marker and um, a whiteboard. You can buy them usually in a, a small uh, marketplace, Chinese markets, um, stuff like that. They usually have something like that. $2 shops. I don't know if you necessarily have a $2 market or store in your country, but you'll have something, something that's equivalent to that. Uh, next, I would say speakers and iPod. I know a lot of people like music and sound effects. I, I don't really do that so much nowadays, but you can. Um, so if you want to take music along and set the atmosphere, then take a speaker and your, your iPod and just plug it in and run it from there. It can be a really helpful tool for a dungeon master who wants, wants to set the atmosphere and um, just remember to turn it down when you need to talk and other people are talking, otherwise you've got the music blaring too loud. Okay, so pre-made maps. If you don't like having to draw your maps, uh, essentially while the game is running then you can draw your maps up on a piece of paper or on game paper with squares or whatever you can do that yourself in advance just do them yourself draw them up and just roll them out when you need them or if you feel that's just too much effort you can buy pre-made maps and there's a whole bunch of them uh, Pathfinder, Game Mastery, Paizo they make them um, there's a whole bunch that have been Put out by uh, Gale Force 9. You can buy those. They're reusable. The only thing is you can't change the setting. So once you buy it, you sort of you stuck with the same setting. That's the only hassle. So pre-made maps can be very, very helpful. I carry quite a few of them, and usually they're all made of paper, so I don't have to worry about rolling things up. So I can I can flatten them out. Next, uh, I usually keep my miniatures or my tokens or pawns in either a clear container so I can see everything or a toolbox and I would suggest if you're going to use a toolbox to carry your miniatures around or your tokens or your pawns um, you can use the Ziploc bag it's very very helpful it's nice and portable doesn't take up a lot of space but if you've got a lot of stuff then you'll want a, a, a container and I highly recommend clear containers so you can see everything it's always the most horrible thing to open the box and like I've got to rummage through to find everything. That's a pain, it really is. Uh, next would be a dice rolling app on your phone. If you've got a phone, get a dice rolling app. There's lots of different apps you can use on your phone, but a dice rolling app is one of the key things I would say is really, really helpful. Now that's not because you shouldn't be using the dice. You've probably already got dice, but if you have to roll 20 dice, okay, 20 dice is a lot of dice. You're going to be there a long time. If you're dealing with a lot of attacks, it can be a drag. It's much easier to just program into an app how many dice you need to roll and roll them all at once. Does that make sense? Well, hopefully it does. Uh, next, player handouts. If you have player handouts for your, for your adventure, whether it's a pre-made, pre-published adventure, bring them along. Or if you've made your own, bring them along. Um, They'll cost maybe a little bit. It's like printing costs. So a few dollars or a few cents. 
maybe 10, 20 cents. It depends where you are. I don't know what your printing costs in your country are, but player handouts really cool. And players really like them. Uh, also, homemade terrain. You can buy terrain. It's really expensive. It's really hard to store, but you could make your own terrain. I know a lot of people like using terrain. It gives it a three-dimensional feel, and it can bring your players more into the game, or it can sort of make them feel like they are playing a computer game. So you decide what you and your players prefer. That's probably the most sensible thing to do. Just give me a second, I'm gonna take a drink of water. Oh, that's better, okay. Dungeon tiles. Now, I don't like dungeon tiles very much, but I know people do use them, and as long as you stick them down to something, and that, it'll stop them from moving around. There's a few dungeon tiles available from the Dungeons and Dragons board games that are interlocking, so they're like a jigsaw puzzle, uh, but they have limited sort of um, options, and you have to probably buy quite a lot of boxes to get everything you wanted. And also, too, you've still got to carry them around. It can be heavy. Cardboard is cardboard, after all. Um, so you've got to decide whether that's really your, your thing. I think it's more an option when you're playing in your own home and all your gear is there at home, rather than if you're being portable. You know, or a lot of the stuff I'm talking about, when you're going portable, it's just a hassle to carry. But if you're in your own home, that's a different story. Okay, uh, TV and cables. I've seen a few dungeon masters who use their TV and a cable linked to, to their laptop to give players, you know, big images that they can show people. This is, we're getting high tech now, okay? You can literally put your battle map on a, on a, on a TV just turn it horizontal if you want. Or you can put it up against the wall and show them all sorts of images. It's quite a cool way of actually doing stuff. I don't do it myself, but I've seen it done very well and it was fun. Anyway, uh, moving on. Um, make sure you bring something to drink and eat. Okay, don't rely on the players to bring you something to drink and eat. If you need to drink, Make sure you bring some water or, or something to hydrate yourself, like I need right now, okay? Because as you're running the game, you will get tired, your voice will get strained, you'll, you'll get dried out. You need to be able to drink often, and you need to keep your blood sugar up. So make sure you eat, bring some food. And um, by all means, eat the food that the players produce for you first. And you can eat your stuff later, <laughs> okay? All right, next. Um, oh, bull clips. Now, bull clips are the benefit over a bull clip over a paper clip. Now, I said paper clips are really handy, but a bull clip can actually go onto a much thicker, it can, it can clip onto something that's much thicker, which uh, a paper clip really can't. They get bent and out of shape. So, bull clips are really good. I like them on the top of my Dungeon Master screen because one, they're easy to get back off. Usually I don't have to worry about the little wire on the paper clip um, tearing into my Dungeon Master screen because the ball clip doesn't do that. It's got rounded corners and edges so it doesn't damage the screen. And yeah, you can clip it onto something that's quite thick. So it can be very, very helpful for holding things in place. And um, a timer. Now you can use your, your phone as your timer for timing things or you could use a watch, or you could use just an egg timer. When I say a timer, it doesn't really matter what the type of timer is. It's really unimportant. I tend to take an egg timer, usually that I can turn over, and it, I, think it, I think it's about 30 seconds to one minute, and then the, sun, the sand will run out. They can be very, very helpful for running your game. These are all tools. You don't have to have them, okay? But they can be useful and sometimes um, just, just to make your life easier. Uh, I think as people go and play the game more, they wind up carrying more and more tools, uh, but when you're going portable, it's not practical. So that's essentially all I want to do in terms of, there's a, I've talked about so much stuff. Um, so if you found this video helpful and informative, please share, like, and subscribe. I do videos every day. Every day there's another video up. And uh, very shortly, I will be unemployed, which probably means that I will be doing a lot more videos um, and possibly streaming every day. So 
what I would like is for you, if you don't mind, is to click not just the like, subscribe, and make a comment. Making a comment that's useful is great, but there's apparently a little bell. There's like a bell underneath the video. And if you press that, apparently you get occasional notifications. Apparently a few people think that I haven't been posting for a long time. I didn't realize that YouTube had created this bell. It's like, couldn't we just click the subscribe button and that's it? The notifications bell, yeah. You're right. Is it Drigger? Um, Drigger Wolf, yeah, exactly. Click that thing. Now, if you have questions about anything that I have talked about today, put them in the comments, okay, after the video goes, um, goes off live. But if you're gonna stay around, you can ask me in person, because I will hang around, and you can ask me about anything. You can ask me about the, the, the kit, or you can ask me about something unrelated to the kit. That's fine. If, I can, if, I can, if I've got enough information in my brain and my brain's working properly, I'll give you a straight answer. Okay? Really, really simple. And I will say this, that right now as of, I think it's Wednesday, New Zealand Standard Time, I am currently unemployed. And every time you guys click on that Amazon link to buy something, um, you don't even have to buy the thing that I have linked to. You can go somewhere else. I literally, the starter kit, man, how did I miss the starter kit? I bet you I've got it written on here somewhere and I just haven't said anything. The starter kit is one of the most awesome tools. Now, if you're not using the adventure, carrying the box around can be a drag. But the, the core rules in there and the pre-generated character sheets and the dice, really helpful tools. Grab those things and take them with you. I think I used the, I actually used the, the book. It's like a magazine type book. I used that more than my player's handbook when I first got it, and it survived longer. Oh, seriously, it really did. But the uh, yeah, the Dungeons and Dragons 5e starter kit is a very awesome tool. And even though once you've finished Lost Mine of Fandalva, the stuff in there can be very very helpful. So till next time, keep rolling those twenties. And I don't know what has happened to my dice. Is it? Ah, I found it. This was my dice. So keep rolling those 20s and um, keep watching my videos. I'm not going anywhere. I, I've got to keep doing this. It's the only income stream I have, apparently. But look, I'm, uh, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop and just pause for a second. And then you guys can ask me whatever sort of question you want. That's enough. That's a big enough pause. Okay, let's have a look. What have we got here? We've got some questions. Um, I don't know if he's still in the room, but I think Ian had said, I am so happy I live in Texas and it finally snowed today during school for two hours. It's summer in New Zealand and I'm so glad that I'm warm. Although I will be happy when I can open all the windows and let the sound in because I'm cooking. <laughs> but I do understand um, snow is cool. Even if it is cold, it's cool to play with. So have a great time. Um, Drigger Wolf, you said, um, hooray, more DM guide. Um, Drigger, I'm probably going to do, do um, a Dungeon Master's guide or workshop every day. Yep, literally every day. Probably not on the Sunday. I, I am, I'm, I'm Christian, so that's the day of rest. And my partner would absolutely have my garters. Uh, and a twist if I try to do this seven days a week. And I do have to have a rest point, don't I? So, yeah, you can expect quite a lot more of this. Um, the good news is that I, I actually ordered my webcam. I ordered the Logitech Brio, which is 4K compatible. Yes, it does 4K, which means it'll probably take me days to upload anything. Um, <laughs> but I got it, and I also got the... It's the Blue Yeti microphone. Now the Blue Yeti microphone I picked up this morning. There it is. It's on the table. I haven't even opened it up. This thing literally just plugs into my computer and it's supposed to have fantastic high quality sound so you don't have to put up with me on my phone. And I know <clears throat> Ethan, I think it's Ethan Hawke. 
I'm going to apologize now, Ethan Hawke, if you see this video or you're watching now, for all the videos that you could never listen to because it was so quiet. YouTube just drops the sound volume on videos as soon as they hit live stream. I just can't do anything about it. And sound quality off a phone is not very good anyway. So that means once I get the gear, because the, the webcam hasn't arrived, I've ordered it, I've paid for it, it's just got to arrive, and uh, I will roll that out as soon as I know how to use everything properly, and we'll have better video and better audio on this channel from now on. Yes! It's been a long time. It's taken me ages to make enough money to actually afford it, but it will happen. So, what else we got here? Um, Drega, okay, he's talked about the starter kit. Thank you, Drega. That was really, really helpful. I don't know why I forgot that. Okay, um, getting there. Next. Oh, here we go. Drega's got a question. I was thinking to get into Adventure League. Okay, so I just got approached. I used to be a Dungeons and Dragons Adventure League coordinator in New Zealand. And I, I, I built the community, okay? And I keep building the community through other means, but I'm not part of Adventure League now. It's a great way to, new, to meet new people. Okay, honestly, Drega, you will, you will meet people that you won't like. You always do, okay? But you will meet people who are awesome. And it will make it so easy to populate your, your table <laughs> with players. They'll always look, players are always looking for casual games, but there's always that person who comes into a casual game and they don't want to play in a store. They want a home game and they literally just want to play in somebody's lounge. Now, I play in a cafe. We just play in a cafe. They buy food, they buy drink, they have a good time. We do it after work and uh, it's all good. Yeah, so join Adventure League. You don't have to keep going. You can just do it sporadically. That's the great thing about Dungeons and Dragons Encounters. If you have a store near you, you can join up. That's not going to be an issue. If you don't have a store near you and you're in the WAPS and you still have internet, you can play online. The Dungeons and Dragons Adventure League is available to play online. They, they do it through Fantasy Grounds. They do it through um, Roll20 and other platforms. So literally, join the Adventure League, play with them, get your players, and uh, yeah, you will learn a lot of new things from the Dungeon Masters that you see there too. You'll be able to see all the kits and the stuff they bring along. They have to be portable, so they can't carry everything that I just talked about, so you'll have a better idea of what you need. Okay, what else is there? Um, oh, Cool Keg Computer. York, you've said, hi Fred, sorry to hear about work, it, it happens to us all, um, in New Zealand we have a rotation of about, I think it's 18 months, the, the law states that here you, you can um, disestablish a position, and then after 18 months, provided you don't do it before that period, you won't be taken to court, so they wait for the 18 month period, then they disestablish people, and they push everybody down, they rehire at the lowest bottom rate they possibly can. It's just happened to me. It's unfortunate, and um, I'm going to move on. I'm going to do something new. I'm going to uh, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to start a new channel, doing something else as well. I'm a work tutor, so I'll do that. Uh, what else? Um, I'll make sure to tell people about your channel. Thank you very much. Traffic is really good. Um, I'm actually going to have to try and figure out how to improve traffic through the channel, and I'll do a video later on about. Um, asking you about the best social media platforms to actually uh, put how to D&D on, okay? Um, more traffic should help, yeah. I think I estimate that I need to have 10 times as much traffic on YouTube and 10 times as much traffic and sales on Amazon affiliate marketing, which is like, it's a lot. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> Um, there's a potential of having a job that's part-time next year, but I, I, it's a long way off. Okay, um, Okay, Drega Wolf has said, that's true, it's good and bad at times. Yes, Adventure League can be good and bad at times. 
but I still think you should give it a go. Um, Drega Wolf has said, some players are out there to ruin the game and got to play smart. Yeah. It is, um, look, everybody has a different way of what they think is fun. Sometimes it's not useful to you. Uh, sometimes it's not going to be uh, productive in a group. Um, what I will say about taking a game public is you have to be careful about what you take in your kit. Make sure you take things that don't matter if they get stolen. Okay? And it's not a good idea to take your most valuable miniatures in your Dungeon Master's kit if you are dungeon mastering for a, a Dungeons and, Va and Dragons eventually game or in a public forum. Unless you're prepared to lose stuff. Because it can happen. It's happened to me. It will probably happen to you if you do it. So make sure you take stuff that is sort of cheap and disposable. Uh, next. Drega Wolf has said, um, you seem like a positive person. Well, I am a positive person. I'm certainly trying to be. And your videos are really helpful. I really want them to be helpful. And they, they need to be useful to you. I... You know, I've actually got more out of teaching and talking online about Dungeons and Dragons uh, than I have from teaching carpentry, which I really didn't get that much out of years ago anyway. It was, it was hard work. Um, it was hot. I worked in a shed. Um, and, you know, I was teaching driver's licensing. I was teaching budgeting and computer skills. Um, I was covering things uh, like literacy and numeracy. And they're all really important, but um, there's something to be said for having a bigger audience. You know, it's nice to have a small group, but honestly, it's great to have an online audience that's so large. And the, the feedback that I have got has been really, really nice. It's been, um, it's been nice not to have to, to contend with uh, some of the the more difficult elements of face-to-face -face and, you know, my, my job was hard. It was, I was dealing with people from the criminal justice system, so it was, it was hard work. Okay, all right, what else we got here? Um, I'm sure it will get better. I'm sure it will. Okay, uh, cool care computer. He says, will you agree with Drega? Good. I agree, very helpful indeed. I was thinking of making my own DM screen um, at some some point soon as well. Uh, as it happens, uh, um, cool care computer. I'm going to be sheepish about this, but I, I actually plan to make two videos on Dungeon Master Screens custom building. That's not about what goes inside it. That's just the the framework, you know, um, how to make it out of cardboard, or how to make it out of um, art panels like you can get canvas panels about the right size and you just duct tape everything together those videos are coming and i'm going to have a lot of spare time so you can probably expect those videos will come i won't do them as a live stream i'll break them up because they'll be time consuming and i think i need the quality to the be as as high as possible so that uh it's really useful for people i find that Every time I stream and I cut, problems occur. Um, I don't know what it is with YouTube right now. I'm, I, I'm getting flagged for videos that shouldn't be getting flagged. Every time I trim a video, it's putting the, the video um, out of sync with the audio so the sound doesn't match my mouth. And So, yeah, I'm going to probably do live stream every day. I'm not going to cut this video. I'm not going through that mess again, okay? It's going to stay as it is, no touching. What I will do in the description is I will, I'll point out when the video starts, okay? So you don't have to sort of sort of uh, fast forward till you find out when I start talking, um, or at least when I start talking about something useful and rather than rubbish, okay? Are there any more questions? Because we are, oh, I've got about 10 more minutes, but if there's no more questions, I will probably head off. Um, as I said, they do not have to be about the Dungeon Master kit or their gear or equipment. It could be anything. I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to making them called cool Care Computer. I think, I think making your own Dungeon Master screen is 
definitely something you should do. I, I mean, if you don't have time, you know, literally don't have time and you've got the money, buying one's great. But making your own Dungeon Master screen is just super awesome. Uh, okay, right, what have we got here? Uh, Drega has just said, what are your opinion, okay, what is your opinion on the Monster Slayer archetype? I'm planning to go into that. Okay, um, I haven't looked at it a lot. Uh, what I did is I, I used that particular um, archetype in my Curse of Strahd adventure. I provided it from the Unearthed Arcana. It wasn't polished, it was out of balance. I think it's a really cool idea. It is a really wacky and unusual name. It's a little bit cliche, but Monster Slayer? Who doesn't want to play a Monster Slayer? It's a good idea. So the fact that they built it makes perfect sense. In terms of the mechanics, you'd have to give me some time to have a really close look because I haven't looked at the, the new Monster Slayer archetype in detail and the mechanics. And I, um, I'm not really good at player options. I really, I need John Shackle with me. John Shackle's like um, a, power gone, a power gamer gone crazy. So he can point out all the flaws, all the good things, all the bad things. Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, Drago, what do you got here? Um, that's true, the DMG output I got from um, Hunter's Mark and Slayer Prey with uh, Sharpshooter is insane. Yeah, it can be. It can be. Um, I don't know that that's necessarily a, an issue. You know, because you are shooting something from a distance. Um, and there are ways of getting around that sort of thing. You know, Dungeon Masters can deal with it. Uh, it's really up to you. Look, you, I don't have a problem with trying stuff and then telling my players, look, I'm either going to make some changes to this because I don't think it's going to work, or I'm just saying, look, I'm going to take this off the board because it, there's a problem. Um, players don't like that sort of thing. Honestly, they don't like it. You give them a tool or a toy and you take it away from them, they hate it. But, you know, if you've got people who really trust you, they will just, they'll accept that. I find that if I'm open to new, trying new things, um, my players are pretty understanding. Okay, cool kid computer. You have said, what have you got here? This is a big, big message. Uh, cool keg computer. I think I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, but I was thinking of starting a YouTube channel to post some videos. You should do it. I don't care whether it's about Dungeons and Dragons or not. It is, it is one of the... Um, if you've got time to do it, and you want to do it, and you're not worried about making the money, because I didn't really worry about making money when I started this, okay? Uh, now it's just become my only income um, stream. That's the only thing. Uh, or one of two income streams. But um, do it if you like it. If you don't like it, don't do it. Uh, you said it's not about D&D specifically, but anything I should keep in mind before doing that. It takes a lot of time. I used to jot down notes. I used to try to have a, um, a script and I find it very, very hard to work from a script. Um, but from notes, is not so bad. When you are filming yourself, here's a, a big tip. It's really hard to just talk naturally and never stop without saying things like um, er, so, ah, e, ah, um, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. You know, all the filler words, all the I'm um, thinking words, or just pausing and like, ah. Uh. So what you want to do when you're talking is you want to say one sentence, such as, Hi, welcome to How to D&D. And stop. And leave a space. And then say the next thing. My name is Frederick Wheeler. And then stop. And that'll, that way it'll make it easier for you to cut everything together. And you will make fewer mistakes. You won't get tongue-tied quite so much. Make sure you have light sources. I have two light sources. And the lamps that I'm using 
are just clamp on ma um, lamps. They're not expensive. I spent like $10, $20 on each lamp. And the bulb is the most expensive thing. Because what I did is I found a bulb that I could put into it that produces almost no heat. It produces light, but almost no heat. That's really, really helpful. A tripod. It's the last thing people want to see is your camera moving around. They hate it. Okay? Uh, I find it annoying. So make sure you use a tripod. Set things up. Make sure you know where you are. And be patient. Um, make sure you have a, a reasonable idea how to use the editing software. So a few practice runs. Don't delete the bad videos that you make. Okay, if you make videos that aren't very high quality, who cares? Leave them there. Just put them out there. I can't count the number of times I have made a video and been appalled by it and been so embarrassed I wanted to take it down and somebody or a good portion of people on here have said they loved it. And I've been so confused. Or I've done a topic that no, I thought nobody would really want to listen to. And they thought it was great. I have no idea sometimes what you guys want to watch. And you probably won't either. Okay? So that is my suggestion to you. And don't go and buy expensive gear. If you don't have the money, don't buy it. Just use cheap stuff to start with. Cheap or nothing. Just use the phone. Okay? And then build from there. You don't even have to talk. You can use subtitles. Put your subtitles into the editing software. Um, and just shoot picture, moving picture and subtitles. Works great. Bit of sound, music in the background. Make sure it's not copyright. YouTube has a huge library. Make sure you select something that you can monetize. Okay? Right, what else we got here? Oh, man, it's so warm. Um, Drigar Wolf. Um, I'll be off now. It's nice to have you around. I'll see you later, man. Uh, great to see more content from you. See you on the next stream. Yeah. Now, I, as I said, um, it's... Saturday here in New Zealand, which means it's Sunday tomorrow, which means I won't live stream tomorrow, which means I may live stream on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, but probably it's going to start after Wednesday, New Zealand Standard Time. I'm probably going to start streaming at that point because that is when I will have all the time in the world in between looking for work and applying for jobs to do this sort of thing. Okay? So live streaming for half an hour or an hour will be probably very, very regular. And as soon as I've got the webcam in my hands and set up, I'll do it. Promise. Okay? Uh, any more questions? Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll leave it at that. No more questions? Well, okay. Okay. So, um, just so that you know what's coming, for those of you who are still here, uh, what is likely to be my next live stream? It is probably going to be, I hope it's going to be, or my plan is, it will be a Dungeon Master workshop on finding players. How to go about doing that. I have some notes, I've talked to a few people and gotten some advice, and uh, so that will probably be the next live stream Dungeons and Dragons or Dungeon Master Workshop. And I think that is where we will leave it. Nobody else is saying anything. I think people are just waiting for something to happen. So, um, we're pretty much out of time and I'm going to cut it short there. And as I said, I will not be cutting this. I'm going to put a link in the description so you can see when the actual video starts, when I start saying something useful rather than blah, 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 blah lights and uh, uh, is that working in my sound and yeah I'll, I'll get you past that okay all right see you later